Previously on The Bill. It's always going to be the same, isn't it? Me and Luke on our own all the time. I'm handing my notice in. You can't let him stay here. Because if you do, he will come for you again. I killed him, Ricky. What happened? I should have seen it coming, Gov. Anne said they had another row. He threatened her. She was terrified. It was a knife. I might see her on the way. She's in no state to be interviewed. We'll let the FME decide that. You have certain rights. We can contact somebody and inform them that you're here. There's no one. And you're entitled to free legal advice. Come on. Get yourself a cup of tea. I'm fine, Alec. Look on your stern and while it's still fresh in your mind. I'm glad I caught you. Uh, I think you'll find you haven't. I was just adding up some paperwork on my phone. My office now. Now, if you would like to explain your earlier rant about resigning. It's been a tough day, ma'am. A copper having a tough day, whatever next. I had to watch my son get arrested. Sit down. And that's reason enough, is it, to chuck all this in? Liam resents having to spend half his life looking after his younger brother whilst I'm doing 12-hour shifts. I mean, it's no wonder he's gone off the rails. Well, there are other options. Better hours, more regular routine. Yeah, well, I didn't join up just to sit on my backside. Well, why did you join up? Because I wanted to make a difference to the local community, you know? Well, I must have been stupid. I never had you down as a quitter. You've worked so hard to get this far, starting out as a PCSO and then graduating to the real thing. Not many people do that. Yeah, well, um... Things have changed since then. If I'm honest, I've not been enjoying the job recently. Oh, do me a favour. Please, accept my resignation. I've got some holiday coming. I just want to end tomorrow's shift. I... Well, there's nothing more to say. Fancy a drink? I, uh, thought you had a date with Rod Jessup. Oh, I did. But, uh, he told me his life story, especially how hard everything had been since his wife died. I'm sorry. I got so bored, I pretended I had to come up back here to do some work. But then he insisted on escorting me here. At least he's a gent. Yeah. But I promised myself, no more needy men. Gent or no gent. PC Stamp and Hollis were called by a neighbour who'd heard shouting. When they got there, they found Tom Parker lying dead in the kitchen and his wife in the garden still holding a knife. Well, did she admit to stabbing him? Well, I couldn't seem to get anything out of her at first. You want a drink of water? So, they called Mickey Webb, who's a DC here. He's an old friend of the family. He did the necessaries, took the knife off her and he arrested her. But there's a history to this case, which I think you should know about. I got myself up to speed on the way. The 11-year-old, Charlotte Parker, seriously assaulted and hospitalised her little sister a few weeks back. Yeah, but we also discovered at the time that Tom had been knocking Fern about. Right. Is she in any fit state to be interviewed? Well, FME suggests she's in severe shock. Physical examination showed that she had a black eye and a cut lip, which were probably done earlier that day. They also found older bruises on different parts of her body. Mickey, this is D.R. Rapley from MIT. Hi. So perhaps we should do this in my office. Yeah. I understand you know the family. Yeah. Dara Atlas has been filled in on some of the background. So? So what was Tom doing around at Fern's place? I thought she'd thrown him out. He moved back in the day before. Apparently she was going to give him another chance. It's a distressing case, OK? So just take your time. A distressing case just spin for mind-blowingly terrible, isn't it? So, what sort of state was Fern in when you arrived at the scene? Well, she was scared. She was, like, bewildered. Like she couldn't believe she... But what happened? Couldn't remember? No, not first. She said Tom was shouting at her. She was frightened. 
it was advancing on who was about to attack her. And did he attack her? Um, I don't know. I, she just said that she thought it was, it was coming at me and I thought it was going to kill me or something like that. Well, didn't you make notes? I'm not going to stand there with my head in my notebook while she was falling apart in front of me, was I? Well, make sure you put it all in your statement. Right, let's just leave it for tonight. Go. Can you give me a minute? Mickey, you're going to be all right? I should have been there for a more. Well, who knew you found time to do that? She's a grown woman. In the end, she made her own choices. Most people seem to think that Fern is the real victim in this. She told you that Tom advanced on her in a manner that made her fear for her own life. Yeah. So that's self-defense. If the jury understands that, they'll find her not guilty. Fern's gonna have a hard day tomorrow, but all she's gotta do is tell us what happened. How you doing? No. It's that Fern's doing that concerns me. Look, just so you know, I am aware of what Fern's been through the last two months. Tom's been knocking her about for a lot longer than that. Yeah, but now he's dead, and we have to investigate that death properly. That doesn't mean I don't have any idea of what she's feeling. Grief, fear, guilt. And on top of that, she's got to tell her daughters that she's killed their dad. If I ask the custody sergeant to turn a blind eye, do you want to see Fern? I'm sure she'd appreciate a friendly face. It might help her calm down before the interview. Yeah. Thanks. Here's my written statement. Got five minutes. Thank you. What, Mickey? It's happening. Where are my clothes? Are, are they going to charge me? Your clothes have been examined forensically. The house has been treated as a murder scene. At the FME will see you shortly. They'll assess whether you're fit enough to be interviewed, OK? Charlotte and Molly don't know anything yet. No one's told them. Mm. Oh. Molly's not well enough. I don't want her knowing yet. She's too weak. But someone needs to tell Charlotte. Will you tell her? I'm sorry. It's not fair. I've got no right to ask. I'll do it. I'll do it. Thank you. What are they going to think of me? They're going to hate me. No, Fern. Charlotte knows what her dad was like, OK? This may take time, but they will understand. Fern, listen to me. When you're interviewed, it's very important you remember what you told me when you stabbed Tom, OK? You were scared for your life. Scared, yeah. Yeah? And he was coming at you? I don't remember. It all happened so fast. Fern, you've got to remember. You were defending yourself, yeah? Good. How was Liam when you got in last night? Well, you know, thrilled at being arrested. I'm sorry. It's hardly your fault, is it? Okay, sir. Yes, 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 yes. What happened? Looks like I fell over, didn't it? Didn't even get a laugh. How did you manage to get a cut like that just by falling over? It wasn't easy. It took a lot of practice. It's a funny world, isn't it? You go to the shop, you end up on your back. They're only trying to help you, Harry, mate. Oh, of course they are, bless them. Is it Harry Granger? You remembered Harry Granger. Don't be a stranger, eh? <laughs> I'm PC Laura Bryant. My lad used to go to one of the youth clubs you helped set up. Which one was that? Bryant. Liam Bryant. <laughs> How is he? Oh, well, you know, lad's his age. Uh, that looks like a very nasty cut to me. Gonna get you to hospital, get you checked up. Hospital? Don't waste public time and money. It's a scratch. Yeah, well, I'll be the judge of that. OK, Fern. If you could just take us through what happened last night, if you can. Tom and I were... We were rallying. Where? At home. 
Yeah, yeah, I know that, but so, uh, I meant, you know, where in the house? Oh, uh, um, in the kitchen. What were you around about? He'd hit me earlier in the day. That's when your two officers, um... PC Hollis, PC Stamp. By the time they arrived, he'd apologised to me like he always did. And I told them to go. Why did Tom hit you earlier? He was upset because he'd been too drunk to go and see Charlotte that morning. When I got back from the secure unit, we started arguing about it. I thought he'd stopped drinking. I thought he was getting help from a therapist. He wasn't. He promised, but... The therapy had been your idea. He'd been getting aggressive for years now, usually just shouting, but when he was drunk, he got physically violent. After Charlotte attacked Molly, I threw him out. And he agreed to get help. Yet you let him come back and live with you? What happened after the two PCs had left? Tom went to work and I tried to sleep. Couldn't. I was trying to work out what to do next. Then I decided to cook a dinner and try and talk to him about seeing someone. So at this point you weren't scared or worried what might happen? I knew I had to do something. Do something? Make him see that if he didn't get counselling, then he had to go. For good, this time. How's you know, Harry? Uh, Harry and my granddad lot like, were mates. Were? Yeah, my granddad died like a year ago. Oh, sorry. And that's okay. Right. Like, Harry lives on his own now, so I you know, just do his shopping, I keep him company and stuff. Ben says you live on your own. On my own what? Yeah, Ruthie passed away. Didn't she, Harry? About six months back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can't be six months. Thank you. He ain't just fallen over. Mm, I've just checked the shop, Harry said we'd been to. The shopkeeper reckons there might have been an argument. He was round the back at the time, but he thinks some young lad was shouting at Harry. And not Ben? Reckons he was Asian. He's given me a CCTV tape to look at. What sort of a mood was he in when he came back from work? Quiet at first. And had he been drinking again? Maybe. He often had a few on his way home. But you still broach the subject of therapy? I told you. I wanted to show Tom that I meant business. He kept saying that we could work it out ourselves. That's when I asked him if his dad had told himself the same lie too. His dad? He's the reason for all of this. Tom's dad had abused Tom and his mum. That's why he hurt me. I should never have mentioned his dad. It made him so angry. He was screaming that his dad was a brilliant guy. <sighs> Telling me to take back what I said. When did you? I couldn't. That monster was why Tom is the way he is. Why Charlotte hurt Molly. He started saying that it was my fault. That if I didn't upset him so much, he wouldn't behave the way he did. He said I was to blame for what happened to Molly. And how did that make you feel? I don't know. I was used to him being irrational, but I pushed him too far this time. I was scared. Did he say he was going to hurt you? Not in so many words. 
Only the signs. Did he strike you? No. Behind you. <laughs> that look in his eyes. Did he advance on you? He came towards me. He was <laughs> screaming. I was so frightened. Then I saw the knife. Where was it? On the counter. In the kitchen. And you picked it up? I must have done. I don't remember. I just know that Tom was lying on the floor covered in blood. And I was holding the knife. Mickey! Yeah? The DCI has asked me to go with you to the secure unit. Phone asked me to tell Sean. He thought it would be better with the two of us there. Mickey! Hi, I've been looking for you everywhere. You got Susie. I've just heard about Tom and Fern. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Why didn't you ring me last night? Oh, I don't want to spoil your dad's evening, you know. I don't mind it. Look, Jack seems to think this could be a bit of a tabloid dream, so I'm going to be around all day. You know, if you, if you want to talk about anything, I know close your words to Fern. I've got to go and break the news to Charlotte. See you later. Oh, where's Laura? She's uh, checking some CCTV footage. Right now, is she? Fine, I think. A bit quiet, maybe. Why? She handed in a resignation last night. What? Because of me? Well, I'm sure that can't have helped, but then she gave me some cock and bull story about not enjoying the job lately. How do you fancy trying to persuade her to think again, yeah? Ah, now, there's another lad comes in, right? Spots Harry and Ben, there's an argument. Harry leaves his shopping. The lad follows them out. Looks like he means business. But why would Harry not tell us about it? Well, let's get down to the hospital, see if he's thinking more clearly. You're already too close to this. You feel for Fern and part of you is grieving for Thomas. No. No way. Mickey, I'm just saying it might be better if you let me do this. Charlotte knows me as well. I promise I'll do this for Fern, OK? an argument with a young lad earlier this morning? No. It was an Asian boy. A bit younger than Ben. The shopkeeper said he heard rowing. He said he saw you and Ben leave the shop, followed by a youth. Um, can I have a quick word? Now, if something's gone on, you need to tell me the truth. Look, Harry had a bit of row with the lads, but that was it. It was nothing. There's no point causing a fuss. Have you seen the cut over his eye? All right, look, the fella's name's Jimmy DaCosta. OK, he came in the shop, he started shouting at Harry, then he, I mean, he followed him out and he hit him. Why did he do that? Because of what happened the other night at the youth club. Like, him and Jimmy got into an argument because of what it was, Jimmy wouldn't come off the pool table. And Harry, uh, Harry was being nice about it, he was, he was being reasonable. But Jimmy was, I mean, he was having none of it, and he picked up a snooker ball and just threw it at Harry. Like, luckily he missed, but like, he broke a TV. So he got banned from the youth club. And is that why he attacked him this morning? Yeah. I want to do a few more tests on Harry. And I want to go home. But does anyone listen to me? Oh, no. Harry, Ben says you were assaulted this morning by Jimmy De Costa. I went to the shops. I found myself sitting on the curb. Harry, they know. Sorry. Know what? Did Jimmy De Costa assault you this morning? Jimmy? He's not a bad boy. Yeah, Jimmy's my mate. He wouldn't hurt me. Yeah, but Ben says he threw a snooker ball at you the other night. But he missed. Harry, it's the second time in a week that Jimmy's attacked you. Now, if you give us a statement, we can try and stop him doing it to you again. How does Charlotte take it? Badly. Did she say anything about her mum? She wants to see her. She doesn't blame her. What a mess, eh? Well, it definitely looks like self-defence. And I'm pretty sure that Fern will get bail by the end of today. I'm going to try and arrange it so that she can see Charlotte and Molly as soon as possible, OK? Thanks. Steph, have you got a minute? Yeah. The lab report said there was very little alcohol found in Tom Parker's system. 
So just the residue of his morning binge. Mm. What? Well, it's just prior to this incident, there's always been a consistent link between Tom's drinking and his violence. What was different this time? Or maybe she wound him up so much about his dad that he didn't need to be drunk to have a go at it. Well, maybe, but... I think we need to get her back in the interview room. Right. How does Charlotte take the news? She's trying to come to terms with it. DC Webb says that she doesn't seem to blame you. But she's got people with her who know how to handle this sort of thing. Trained counsellors. But right now you have to answer our questions. I told you everything. Well, we want you to tell us again. You said you decided to confront Tom about the therapy. Yes. Weren't you scared you might rile him? He calmed down. You're not sure if he'd been drinking again? I don't know. I think when he came home from work, you knew it was safe to talk to him again. Because you knew he was sober. The lab reports suggest Tom had very little alcohol in his system. I suppose... I suppose, yes, I must have thought he was OK. That's why I brought up the therapy again. So you suggested the treatment and brought up his dad's violent past? That's when he lost it. Lost it? Like I told you, he kept screaming about what a great man his dad was. He was shoving a framed photo of him, you know, in my face. So there was a photo of his dad in the kitchen? No. He must have been in the lounge. Then what? Went into the kitchen. Why? To get his jacket. He was going to go to the pub. And what did you do? I... I followed him into the kitchen. Why didn't you run away when he went into the kitchen? Go to friends or to us? You told DC Webb you feared for your life. I... I thought I could get through to him. I wanted him to stay and talk. I didn't want him to go to the pub. I knew if he went to the pub... And... Fern, look, this is important. When you were in the kitchen, did Tom advance on you in any way? No. But I knew he would come at me. Eventually. Eventually? In an hour. Two hours. And he was still... screaming, said he was done talking. And I saw the knife on the counter. You told DC Webby he was attacking you, Fern. Fern? I didn't. Mickey he said I must have been provoked. And I was defending myself. He said to say I was scared. And that Tom had come towards me. You don't think Mickey was telling you to lie? Why? Well, because it would look like you were defending yourself. And in court, that could get you a greatly reduced sentence. Well, nobody in, but neighbour says he often comes back for his lunch. Great right, then. Yeah. Inspector Gold tells me you quit. So what will you do? How many, I mean? Brain surgeon? Celebrity? There is a vacancy going for a dinner lady at Arlium School. It's regular hours, less of them. That's what you want. Well, it'd be quieter anyway. Guess so. Certainly less surprises in the day. You'll probably forget all this nonsense in no time. I hope. There's our man. Jimmy DeCosta! Can I have a word? <laughs> Jimmy DeCosta, I'm arresting you for inflicting actual bodily harm. You do not have to say anything, but he may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Get him in the car. Jimmy, Mr Granger has made a statement corroborated by Ben Thompson that you hit him earlier this morning. We also have CCTV footage of an argument you had minutes before the attack took place and... I'm sure there's a fair number of people who can confirm that you had a previous altercation with Mr Granger on Tuesday night when you threw a snooker ball at him. All right. I admit it, I hit him. I see. But if he's having me arrested, I want him done as well. Done for what? He's a racist. There is not a racist. He's a well-respected member of the community. Yeah, that's what they all say. Even my mum don't believe me. 
Your mum? My dad was never around and Harry used to keep an eye out for my mum and my brothers. And they used to go to the youth club? They all thought he was mint. And so did I, I guess. But they don't know what he's been like these past months. The kids at the club, they've heard him. Go talk to them. What has he said? It's just references to darkies and stuff at first. He actually called people that to their face? <laughs> no, it was more sort of casual, like when he was describing someone, like, you know, the dark you plays for Arsenal, that sort of thing. Didn't anyone pick him up on it? Yeah, a few tried, but he said how he didn't remember saying it. Hiding behind his I'm a doddery old man act. I wasn't having none of it and I told him so. Go on. Well, from then, he seemed to really have it in for me. He started calling me every racist name under the sun. Last week, when he told me to get off the pool table, I had enough. If I'm going down, he's going down too. This doesn't look good. Well, don't jump to conclusions. You've seen Mickey's statement. He says Fern told him that Tom was attacking her. Look, Mickey's a good copper. I know he and Fern have got history, but there's no way he would coach anybody to lie in an interview. Well, I hope you're right for his sake, because if he did do it, his job's on the line. You okay? Why did they interview Fern again? Probably just tie up loose ends, Mickey. Yeah? Yeah. Gaff, what's going on? Fern is now saying that Tom wasn't advancing on her when she stabbed him. She's saying she wasn't in fear of her life. Why? Why is she saying that? Well, at the moment, it looks like you coached her to say that he did. What? I don't understand. Because of Fern, you might have got yourself a bit over-involved in this, all right? Did you tell her to say that he attacked her? No. Okay? I didn't do that and I wouldn't do that. Now, what, am I under investigation? No, not yet. But Diane Radcliffe wants someone on the word with you, so just, just get it clear in your head exactly what happened last night, OK? Mum, we've spoken to several members of Harry's Youth Club. Well, I can tell where your face is. It's a bit more complicated than that. Come on. They've all confirmed to hearing Harry Granger using racist language. They could just be siding with Jimmy, but their accounts are all pretty consistent. Well, it looks like we're going to have to arrest Harry Granger. Mum, I'm sorry, but the evidence looks pretty clear, doesn't it? Anyway, we could be doing him a favour. He might end up with a bit more than a cut eye next time. Right. Come on. No, no, I'll go with Laura. Mum? There's something I need to ask you. I understand there's a vacancy in a safer neighbourhood unit down at Barton Street. Now, you as a Federate would know about that, wouldn't you? Yes. I'll look into it. Thank you very much. And? Nothing very much. Apparently Harry's just disappeared. And no one's seen him leave. He's been distressed all afternoon saying he wants to talk to Ruthie. That's his wife who died six months ago. And next thing is his bed's empty. Well, the security guards haven't seen him either. Um, they're going to be checking their CCTV tapes. In the meantime... Well, shall I go check his house? Yeah, why not? And if that doesn't work out, then try and catch that bloke, Ben, who takes care of him. From what Fern just told us in an interview, it looks like although Tom was verbally aggressive, he wasn't physically threatening, so she wasn't in fear for her life. She also told us that when you arrived, you suggested he was advancing on her and that her life was in danger and that she just went along with it. Well, she's confused. She's been through so much. So you stand by this statement. Fern told you that she was in fear that Tom was about to kill her. Those were her exact words. I think so, yeah. She was shocked. She still had the weapon in her hand. My first priority, as I told you in my statement, was to disarm her. And after that? I, I tried to calm her down. I told her there was nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? She just stabbed her husband. Everybody knew that he was knocking her around, OK? It just seemed pretty obvious she must have been defending herself. What it seemed is irrelevant. Did she tell you that? Well, either she did or she didn't, Mickey. Fern didn't say much at all. I asked her if he came for her and she nodded. But she didn't talk about him advancing on her until you put the idea in her head. I told her if that's what happened, I said that's what she had to say in her interview. I only said that because that's what I thought did happen. I thought it was the truth. Didn't willingly mislead anybody, Gov. All right, let's leave it there for now, shall we? Hey, Fancy coffee? Um, no, thanks. You're right, Mickey. You look awful. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. See ya. No, he's meant to be here. This was his and Ruthie's special place. Oh, thanks for telling us, love. Listen, I think you ought to know. Jim has made a counter allegation against Harry for racial abuse. Well, that's rubbish. 
You're not going to follow it up, are you? No. We've got to. Jimmy's made a statement. And I'm afraid oh. others have uh, made the complaints as well. We're on our way to arrest him when he disappeared. Yeah, but he doesn't mean it, does he? You heard him. Yeah, but it's it's not him, though, is it? Since Ruthie died, there he's, he's not. He's not been the same, but... It was two joyriders that killed her, and they were both Asian. So that's why he says that stuff. But he's not racist. He's not. He never has been. Hi, Harry. PC Laura Bright from Sun Hill. Remember me, Inspector Gold? Oh, oh. Behold the Sisters of Mercy. Pull up a bench, ladies. How you doing, mate? Fine, fine, fine. Great. Having a little chat with Ruthie. Well, it's a lovely spot. We like it here. Harry, Jimmy's made a counter-allegation against you for racial abuse. What? He said what? That is absolute rubbish. Then why did he hit you earlier? Jimmy hit me? I know the family. Jimmy wouldn't hurt me. Harry... That's why you've got your injury. Jimmy hurt me. I need to talk to Ruthie. Harry, Ruthie's dead. Of course she's dead. Do you think I don't know that? You're not the first one to tell me I'm racist. But if I am, I don't know. Why I say these things? Look, Harry, we're going to have to take you in, but... Listen, I promise I'll do everything I can to sort it out, all right? Um, you're not going to charge him, are you? Listen, I think I ought to speak to his GP first. Man, if you think that's for the best. What? Look, he's not well, and he's clearly been traumatised since his wife Ruthie died. I, I think he ought to talk to someone. I'll leave it with you, then. Right, Harry. Come on. Come on, darling. Come on. Oh, thank you. Sorry to bother you. I was wondering if I could speak with Sergeant Ackland. She's on custody duty at the moment. Can I help? Would you tell her I'd like a word? Give her these. Let's wait. Is a Rod Jessup at front desk for you? Tell him I went home early. Playing hard to get, eh? If you're sure. If I send DC Webb's statement with all the other evidence, the CPS are going to want to know what the hell's going on. If there's an investigation, he could lose his job, you know. Well, Mick is impetuous sometimes, I'll admit that. And he can care too much. You think he cared too much this time? He's a good copper. Oh, don't give me that his heart's in the right place stuff. In your professional opinion, do you think he deliberately coached Fern to lie to us? No, I don't, no. I think he genuinely believed that Tom had attacked Fern. And somehow, during the confusion of the moment, he thought that Fern had indicated that. I think a lot of him, don't you? Well, you suggest now defending him because he's a mate. Look, he made a big mistake. I'll admit that, but that's what it was. It was a mistake. There's no way that he would intentionally lead Fern. So what would you do now, if you're in my position? Well, I'd tear the statement up and let him do it again. You didn't realise what you suggested. I'm not suggesting anything. You asked me what I'd do. And like you say, I know him better than you. It's your call. Oh, no. Well, it transpires Harry was diagnosed with early Alzheimer's before Ruthie died. Once she'd gone, he stopped visiting his doctor. Oh, typical. GP retired, so it was never followed up. That's why he's been saying these racist stuff. Reverting to the past, you know, the doctor says it's a common symptom. Well, that's all very well, but we need Jimmy DeCosta to withdraw his allegation. Got it covered, ma'am. Once he heard that Harry wasn't pursuing the assault, he's decided to forget all about it. You're making this look a bit too easy, PC Bryant. Nice one. Yeah, well, I think I ought to go and have a word with Harry, you know, explain to him what's been wrong with him these past few months. <sighs> the Hobbit. Ah. I saw what's going on. 
Jimmy's dropped the charges. Brilliant. Well, we're going to take our young then. Harry, have you got any family? Family? Yeah, I've got hundreds of them. And they're all boys. They call me Mr Chips. He's got a sister in Kent. Is that all? Mm. I think we're going to have to call social services. I can look after myself. Harry, I think you know you're not well. I spoke to the doctor earlier. Apparently you had some tests done before your wife Ruthie died. I don't think we ever got the results. The doctor diagnosed Alzheimer's. That's why you've been saying the things you've been saying. Oh, yeah. It's in its early stages, but you will need looking after. They're not going to take him away, are they? Not necessarily. With medication, it can be slowed down, but it needs monitoring. You're going to have to go back to hospital and, and get some more tests. I don't want medication or hospital or tests. I swear then, I'll come with you, won't I? I'll come with you. Yeah. Now, let's so get the both of you home. Ben, you need anything. You come and see me, right? How are you doing? I was thinking about calling it a day. Right, well, I won't ask if you fancy a drink or anything. Mickey, you've been through hell today. But you won't speak to me about it, so I've just got to stand back and watch you suffer. I know you feel edgy about us getting in too deep, but... If you won't talk to me when something like this is going on, then... Well, I don't know why we're together. Sorry, you right? Sorry. I feel really helpless, okay, with all this stuff that's going on with Fern. And I know I'm taking it out on you, and I'm sorry, you right? Jack said that Fern could plead self-defence and that the jury should find her not guilty. Well, there's been a development since you spoke to Jack. It's not looking like self-defence now. And I'm under suspicion of coaching Fern. Coaching? They think that I told her to say that Tom was attacking her when she stabbed him. So if they think you did coach Fern, how much trouble are you in? Well, it's a sackable offence. Possible criminal charges, perverting the course of justice. I made a real mess of things, aren't I? Mickey, you were in an impossible situation. It's no wonder you weren't thinking clearly. Whenever you're ready, Mickey. Yeah, judgment time. Since we've mislaid your statement, I need you to write it all down again. Mum? And I want a verbatim account of everything Fern said to you at the crime scene. Or indeed the fact that she said nothing at all. Right. I need it as soon as possible, please. Was there something else? Uh, um, why? Your governor. He seems adamant that you didn't set out to deceive anyone. And if he's prepared to stick his neck on the line by asking me to do this, then I guess he's right. Thank you. Good result. Not bad for your last day. Thanks, Mum. Um, look, what I said yesterday about hating the job, it's, um, not true. It's quite the opposite. But you've got other responsibilities. Now, Leela's found out that there's a vacancy at Barton Street in their safer neighbourhood scheme, regular hours, nine till five, and doing what you do best. What's that? Well, you've been terrific on this Harry Granger case. You know, dealing with everyone, your instincts. That's a real talent, Laura. You'll get your chance to make a difference. I'll run it by my boys. Right. Now, tonight we've really got something to celebrate. What do you mean? The shift are going to give you a proper send-off. Oh, no. No, thanks, Mum. Oh, come on. No, I, um... I think it's time I put my sons first. I better get off home. Okie dokie. Well done, you. Dale Radcliffe tells me she'd let you make a new sermon. 
Yes, Gov. And she told me it was your idea to give me a chance. Thanks. Well, you just got a bit too involved, didn't you? Lost sight of what really matters. Just don't make a habit of it. CPS have got back. And? We can go ahead and charge for a murder. Do you mind if I break the news to her? You sure? Yeah, I'd like to see it through. It's up. They're going to charge you with murder, but in court the verdict could be reduced to manslaughter. Really? Yeah. With the stress that you've been under, the worry about Molly and Charlotte, and what I can only assume is a lack of mates queuing up to say what a great bloke Tom was. Tom always used to say you were the best mate he ever had. If it's manslaughter, how long? Five years, but you'll probably only serve half of that. And after the initial court hearing, you'll almost certainly get bail. Then you'll be able to see Charlotte and Molly again. You've got to stay strong. Fern, it's just you, Charlotte and Molly now. Remember that, OK? Yeah? Day. Yeah. Have a do the drink, Gov? Uh, well, I would, but uh, I've got to do the formalities with Fern. Nice work, with you? Yeah, you. i buy you a drink, say thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Here's to the end of a very long day. Mm. And thanks for today, by the way. I don't just mean let me rewrite my statement, I mean for everything. You've been very considerate to me and Fern, so thank you. Well, anyone can see why Fern did what she did to Tom. And she didn't need me coming in and giving her the hard copper acts, and neither did you. Yeah. So where do you go from here? I don't know. To be honest, I can just see myself ordering a few more of these, getting very, very drunk, and beyond that, who knows? Same again, then. Oh. Gina said you might be taking the Barton Street gig. I'm thinking about it. OK, because it would be a shame for you to turn your back on all of this. You're a good cop. Is she all right? Yeah. Hello. What are you doing here? Your colleague. Lucy you Harmon? She told me that you weren't in. But then she seemed to make a point of telling me what time your shift finished. Did she now? Look, I'm so sorry about last night dashing off like that. You know, I was tired. Yeah, and... I was a bore. Going on about me all night. It was selfish and indulgent, and I want to make it up to you. But only when you're ready. No pressure in your own time. Promise. How about now? <laughs> Just one drink, though. Those flowers cost me a fortune. One more one out, will it? That's what you said last time you went to the bar. Oh, don't let me force you. I'll have them both myself. Oh, well. I've got lasagna for one in the freezer. I think I'll give it a miss. I thought you'd have a well-trained man at home doing all the cooking for you. What made you think that? I don't know. Just an air you give off. And don't take this the wrong way, but, you know, you just seem the sort of woman that would have everything sorted in life. Like a career, happy home life. <laughs> Not quite. What about you? Well, have I got a well-trained man at home? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just a job. Does have a habit of getting in the way. Mm. It's days like this, isn't it? Last thing you want to do is go and be on your own. One sugar, Earl Grey. Thank you. You got your berry fruits, then? <laughs> no, pop a tea. <laughs> Um, I know, I, I... Are you OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've redone my statement, so everything's going to be OK. Yeah. Do you fancy some dinner? I was just going to get in the shower. What about a little tire place around the corner? Why don't you go and get to the table? Oh, are you sure you're up for that? Yeah, yeah, of course. 
in the ten minutes. All right, yeah? Yeah, all right. See you then. Be quick, so good. Next time on The Bill. Say anything. Before you shot him, did he say anything? Give me the money. Come on! Come on! Put the knife down, son. Put it down. Drop it! Oh, 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 oh,